And so here's a little bit about it if uh, people haven't already read it. So the scope, it's grain for food and feed. The, 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 the grain needs to have a full risk safety assessment consistent with the Codex plant guidelines. And above that, Canada also has to be ensured that the country that's, create, that's done this risk assessment is um, that they're happy that it's following the guidelines and it's consistent with the, with, the, um, with, the, with the risk that Canada would do. It's uh, got some limited content for uh, processed uh, products. Um, basically, processed products will be looked at indirectly and they'll, they'll take it back to what will be the grain because as you treat the grain in a processed product, you can either concentrate or dilute the level, so they've taken that into account. It has, uh, it does not include adventitious presence, so adventitious presence is considered a product that does not have a full approval. So an example of that would have been the um, Liberty Link rice that happened a couple of years ago. So there was a, a rice that was similar that had been approved, but that particular strain had not. So that would be considered AP, not low level presence. It will not include seed. The factor with seed is that um, seed is intended for sowing, and it also needs a more environmental risk assessment. So therefore, they're, they're, it's not that they're not gonna look at seed, but they wanna get food and feed done first, and then we'll look at how we can factor in seeds. And it's not for fruits and vegetables, um, quite obviously, because um, how would you get a low level presence of a fruit or a vegetable? Uh, the elements are it includes both an action level and a crop specific threshold and I'll get a little bit more into it. So the action level, um, they're asking should it be 0.1 or should it be 0.2. <coughs> the idea of the action level is because it's so low that mainly it's to get rid of dust. And I've got a slide where I'll, I'll kind of go through it a little bit more visually um, on the next slide. And um, it does include a level of uncertainty, so the level of uncertainty talks about laboratory testing and making sure that we account for the variability within testing. And it's a level below which enforcement action will not be taken. So the second part is a crop specific threshold. These will be determined by a recommending committee of experts the terms of reference, so what that recommending committee will use to make those, that, that assessment that hasn't been developed and who will be part of it that also hasn't been developed. But these committees will come together, they'll make a recommendation to the Government of Canada and the Government of Canada will then take that information and set the marketing threshold. So it will be a government set um, threshold in the end. Um, again, products that don't fit under this, so if it's above the action level or the threshold, if it uh, has too much risk involved, and if it's not a country that's covered by codex. All these things mean that it will not be covered under this policy. So the government has their own sort of um, diagram, but I, I made this one um, because it fit on the slide, to be honest with you. But, um, so here's the process. A product enters Canada, a GMO is detected, and it's identified as low-level presence. What's going to happen? So the first question is, does the export country that did the full risk assessment, did they, did they follow codex plant guidelines? So if the answer is no, then enforcement's going to be required. But if the answer is yes, then we go to the next question. Is the GMO detected above the action level? So again, this action level is that 0.1 or 0.2 meant to get rid of dust. So if the answer is, is no, it's not above it, no action will be required, no enforcement. But if the level is above, then they'll go to the next question. So the government of Canada will be conducting a low level presence risk assessment. So this is not full, it will follow the codex plan guiding, guidelines, the LLP annex. And after they've done that, they'll say, is the LLP likely to pose safety risks? If the answer is yes, again, it will go back to enforcement. But if the answer is no, then the next question is, is the LLP detected above the crop-specific threshold? Which again, we don't know what these are. They haven't been set. 
But if the answer is yes, again, it will go back, and if no, it will be allowed to come in. So the positives about this is um, the action level is going to get rid of dust. Okay, so we're not talking about a seed, we're talking about a shipment that maybe had a GMO before and didn't get quite cleaned and a little bit of dust is in there. So it's going to get rid of that. Then um, these crop specific thresholds or marketing thresholds, they are going to be proactive. Um, now the risk assessments, that's going to be up to the government of Canada to be proactive. Um, they're going to do a risk assessment once it's done, and if the risk assessment says that it's, it's relatively safe, then that will be proactive and that will be proactive. So the first few times something comes to the dock, it might not be so proactive, it might take some time. But once it's done, then it will be set, and grain handlers will know the procedure. So at that point, they'll know that as long as it's under that marketing threshold, they'll be able to bring a product in.